are here with our one thing. Uh, this week's one thing, look at those kickers, I love it. Uh, we're here with a very special guest, and you know what? I, I was going to say needs no introduction, but certainly needs no introduction from me because I did not bring this person on. Jody, will you do the honors, please? Absolutely. Thank you, Neil. I am honored to introduce our guest today, Prince Ford. Uh, Prince is a two-time winning Grammy artist, a songwriter, a producer, a founder, and an overall mega talent. And we are thrilled to have him here today. Um, as we kick off our episode of One Thing, Prince, would you be so kind as to just share a little bit about yourself and what you're working on with our audience? Um, I am a, um, as you said, Grammy award-winning multi-instrumentalist, songwriter, artist, producer, entrepreneur. I'm in film and TV. I do a bunch of things, you know? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> at the moment, uh, you know, during uh, COVID, I opened up a uh, filming facility, 12,000 square feet, green screen, white psych, 75 feet, five, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and I'm presently building a new studio as well. Uh, I just did the theme song for the Lakers with Pepsi, um, did a song with Aloe Black. Uh, I'm, I just scored a couple movies. I'm doing all types of things. Before you joined, I told everybody what my accomplishments were for the year. I got out of pajamas sometime in March. <laughs> oh, that's, the, that's the bar. That's really <laughs> impressive. <laughs> Since we're, we're talking about the pandemic, I'll lead into my question. My one thing I wanted to ask you today is we are coming out of such a crazy time and such a uh, time in history that none of us had experienced before. And I was curious, you know, what did you enjoy about it? You know, what what did you like? I really enjoyed the silence of the pandemic because it allowed me to hear more, see more, do more, be more. Mm -hmm. I found like, um, you know, on a personal vibe, a lot of people found themselves and a lot of people lost it and became drunks. I found even more of myself. And it was a very, um, very important time for me to clear out some, some thoughts about past situations and people that I felt were um, just like weighing me down. But since we had a chance to pause, it was like, okay, now I can visit this stuff and actually deal with it. Like, oh, okay, I suppressed that. Okay, yay, great. But is it actually gone? So I loved having time to do that. And then I, I loved having the freedom to build this film and TV thing that I'm headed towards. Um, I made more money during the pandemic than I have in 10 years prior. And wow. It was like just the stuff, it was easier to execute the pressure of deadlines and all this stuff, there was none. And, and it's almost like, you know, people sat down, they were like, oh, the world's stopping, I'm gonna sit down. And then those of us that just kept going, it was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> um, there was one thing I did where, with my project Flight of Voices, um, what we did was we started doing videos with everyone. And you guys saw some of these videos. They did it with Hamilton and blah, 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 where everybody's at home, they film their part and they put it all together. Right. So we started doing those videos. And then I was like, how can we elevate this? You know, I'm with my partner all the time. So we didn't really have the need to be separate COVID, COVID thing. So I was like, what if we do these videos, everybody's at home and then we actually include them in a performance, but on screens behind us and with us. So then that's what we did. Her and I would like be there, sing, host, and then we'd have a screen here, a screen here, and a screen here. And then people would come in with their parts and like singing or playing. And we just had a performance. It's like, and while everybody else is like, oh my God, there's no live music. What are we gonna do? I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, well, I'm not going to sit here and worry about how the milk got spilled. I'm just going to like clean it up and figure out the way forward. I love <laughs> so, that. You know what? We've got this. Um, since you're so open, um, J Jody. Watch it. We had. We had <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, I'm polyamorous, Neil. Thank you. <laughs> we've got, so here's the thing. Uh, we've got 
two one things. So we actually prepared a second one. I actually think, Jody, if you wanted to ask your second one thing. Absolutely. Um, I was going to ask you what feeds your soul, Prince? Like what, what makes you happy? What gets you going? Um, what feeds my soul is love. And mm -hmm. that is like, like even saying that almost makes me tear up because everything I do is based on love. Like I lead with love. Everything's love. I love the music. If I don't love the music, if I don't love the artist, I'm not doing it. I'm not working with the artist. Um, it could be a, a billion dollar scheme. If I don't like the people who are doing it or like the thing, I'm out. And, um, you know, I don't know if that just, if that's just in me, if it's because I have three kids, if it's, um, I don't know what it is, except that it is a staple in my life. Leading with love. That is the most important thing with me. I put, I just did my clubhouse bio <laughs> and I was like, the, one of the lines in there is just like, I lead with love, massive hugger, like <laughs> positivity, love and light. Like I'm just about that. That is, that's what feeds my soul. You know, if you, if you take it to a bit of a more calculated thing, then I would say, you know, music would be the first thing music can create creativity, you know, together. Um, I guess you could just say art, that art, I don't paint, but art feeds my soul, not making money. Um, none of that fragile shit. Um, <laughs> just like, and I love make, making people happy, but I guess that's leading with love too. You know, I, I love mentoring kids and helping somebody grow and blossom into this beautiful flower tree with multiple limbs, whatever it's going to be. Um, that's me. That's beautiful. I, and <laughs> it's so wonderful. And I had this conversation with somebody recently, like my dog is always so excited to see people. How do I stop them from being excited? I'm like, are you actually listening to yourself? <laughs> <laughs> how, do you, how do you stop somebody from being happy or sharing love or being like yeah, so yeah 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 <laughs> that leads into my question because one of my all-time favorite songs is where is the love where is the love? <laughs> and when my kids and I are cleaning up the kitchen and I have to put something on inspirational because they're all angry that they have to do it we put that song on then it changes the whole vibe and everyone's like go to the counters but anyway <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you might want to put on pump it but that's fine yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard knocks life, right? Um, but you have said that, and you were talking about doing your bio, that when you sit down to write, that writing, you are receptive to where the universe is guiding me. Being yeah. open is the biggest thing for me. And I always want to open up a new valve and identify something different. And oh, I, I'm good. I didn't remember saying that. that. You <laughs> did say that. I quote unquote, those are your words. So wow. with that being said, I would love to know, you know, what is the number one thing that you do to get into the groove and to tap into that guidance? The number one thing I do to tap into that and get in the groove is like, I just, I open, as I said, I open the valve. I open my chest, I open my, 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 my brain, my spirit, and just let everything flow naturally. When I kind of look at creativity, a lot of people have different ideas about it but I look at creativity as um almost this conveyor belt or like a what's this like a sushi train or something of ideas <laughs> that are up here for anybody to grab Ooh. I, don't, I don't I don't necessarily feel like oh my god my idea is my idea is brilliant I'm the only one that could come up with that no 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 and <laughs> I think that that idea is up there, but because I'm more open, maybe I, it creates a, a, a bigger channel for that idea to come down. I'm able to recognize, oh, that is an amazing idea. You know, how many people say, man, I came up with that two years ago. Yeah, but you didn't do anything about it. Right. <laughs> yes. Like you actually weren't open. You saw it, but you weren't open. If it knocks at your door, yep. exactly. If it knocks at your door, that idea needs a place to sleep, a, a place to sleep, needs some food to eat, feed it, <laughs> or yeah. it's going to go next door. 
Amazing. I love the sushi track. Some people have a trickle of creativity and it's like, how do I put it into a leaf that I can sip later? You're sitting under Niagara Falls with creativity. <laughs> you have so many things. <laughs> so with that track, if you're putting out there, like on this track, I'm if I can't put in art or if I can't put in a project or I can't, if I can't put creativity, I'm just going to put love or I'm going to put something out there. It, it's a loop. It comes back around. Yeah. And so if, as long as you're putting that out yeah. there, it comes back around. So I love that sushi train idea. <laughs> Yo, that you you reminded me the uh, the fights the other day. Um, did anybody see it? Pore and McGregor at the end of the yeah. yeah at the end of the thing. What did Pore say? He said he was talking about how McGregor was talking about his family and he's going to murder him and all that. And he's just like <laughs> he's like he's like it's too much. He's like karma isn't a bitch. Karma's a mirror. And that's the same thing I think about with love, you know, love is just like a mirror, what you, you put out there. That's, you know, that's what you get back. Like you said, it's like circular, it just comes back. So what would you say to somebody who is not of the same consciousness that's stuck in this construct of lack and finite resources? What, what is the one thing you would say to them? Well, the beautiful thing um, <clears throat> is because I've so well traveled and so many deal and so many things, I can take each situation as it's presented to me. You know, if someone's uh, dealing with a, a harsh family member, a mom that doesn't believe in, in them, then I can like point it that direction. You know, if someone's got the talent but they they're nervous to be on stage, I can point it that that direction. Uh, in general, I tell people that consistency breeds trust you know if you are something you are some way then just stay on that track even if it feels like you're about to hit a wall just keep going that wall is going to disappear dissipate maybe even move out of the way i swear this i i wish this was my middle school education right now this is absolutely <laughs> you too. i didn't get this until i was like in my 40s like this kind of like <laughs> We had this tool and this talk at that age. Imagine, imagine. That. So yeah. uh, like <clears throat> I, what I'm most amazed with is J when Jody and Kim opened this up to me, I'm like, I don't know anything about you at all. I don't. Um, I, from this behind me, I'm a video game guy. I am a nerd. Oh. I'm fine <laughs> with it. I'm totally cool with it. Yeah, be a nerd. But <laughs> when I looked, that's awesome, right? When I Great looked, nerd. Neil the nerd. <laughs> I will take it. Give me the shirt. So when I saw interviews with you and I saw what you do, I'm like, he's like a generational talent. Like you've got, and what you said here, it expands on it. Not only were you a musician, not are, are you a musician? Are you a creative talent? Are you an artist? But now you're talking about, I've got 17 pages of notes already. You <laughs> are now a builder. You're like actually putting together studios. You're now moving into television, which you've probably done already. You were talking about on an interview, I saw comedy. I'm like, there's no uh, milestone. There's no vertical that you don't cover. So what is the one thing you would say to somebody who struggles with something new or moving into an area that they're not comfortable with? The one thing I would say is <clears throat> for someone who struggles is look at the people who've done it before you. Mm. You know, there's a thing in music called transcribing. And that's when someone, there's a solo or a song and then you go in and you like write down the solo and you learn it, you know, note for note. You can transcribe people's lives. You can transcribe people's uh, past that they've run. You know, if you're in art, then, you know, study the Basquiat's. Study the people before you and the things before you to get those ideas and you know, you can <clears throat> sometimes if someone's like, I'm in the studio and somebody's like, oh, I don't know. I don't have any song ideas, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, go to like a Stevie Wonder album and just look at the song titles. Hmm. Go to, uh, you know, Bob Dylan, look at the song titles. Go and do something. Sometimes what I'll do is like, okay, same medium, but completely different to you. Okay, so you're a R and b artist. Let's go look at some like punk, punk songs and punk song titles. Well, it's still music, but yeah. it's left of center. You know, that's what they say. Um, I forgot who said it, but 
uh, you know, when you take two things and put them together like no one else has, that's how you become a millionaire or maybe a billionaire. You can add educator to your list. <laughs> yeah. So what For you're sure. saying, <laughs> this is great. Like um, when you, what, what you're saying about this, a lot of the times when I'm working with people, I'll be very forthright and share a bunch of things. And they're like, well, why are you sharing your idea? Someone can steal it. And I'm like, it's not, <laughs> this is great. Is this is like how I think it's like, it's not like ideas. I think of ideas like Tesla thought of energy, like ideas are out there and you can just grab them out of the ether, right? Like, and as soon as you put them in here, they're gone, like they're locked up. So if you keep an idea in here, you've got an idea in jail. Great, good job. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, an idea in jail. Yeah. And, and, and collaboration is key. Like you say your idea and then somebody else goes, wow, that would be amazing if you put this 5% with it. It's like- <laughs> Someone said, hey, let's go to the moon. It wasn't one guy who like did it. It was like one, the, it's a massive undertaking of a thousand ideas to get us yeah, to that yeah. point. And I'm like, holy yeah. crap, that's right. No one person or no one group of people. It was right. a, and like, Neil Armstrong is the man. Yeah. <laughs> Rocket. That is weird. So my one last thing, what is one thing you would say to somebody who has an idea and is too afraid to relinquish it or share it? Oh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one because, I mean, it kind of goes back to what I said before about the different situations, right? And you have to, um, you have to know where that person is coming from and why they're afraid. So if someone's, uh, it, a lot of times people are suppressing because of fear of um, acceptance or fear of, you know, people thinking it's bad. I'm definitely a fan of put all the bad shit out there. Like say it, um, I'll say this and then I'll, I'll veer back to it. But when I'm doing a, a session with somebody who is a little bit quieter or whatever, I'll, I'll say, say everything that comes to your mind. Because if you say it and you say, you know, pink gorillas, I may not hear what you said, but then that triggers me to say something else that might rhyme with that. And then we're moving. If you never say pink gorillas, then I never get, I never get the chance to bounce off of it. And then we're, we're stuck. So, I mean, I think that fear is the opposite of love and we cannot live in fear or move forward in a positive manner with fear. It has to be love. So, mm -hmm. Flip that on its head, turn that frown upside down, <laughs> and don't be afraid. Let's get paid. Come on. <laughs> Lighten up, Buttercup. <laughs> that is absolutely oh, amazing. Prince, it has been an honor, a privilege, an education. And in fact, my journey on discovering more about you begins this day. Uh, I'm so excited to have you here. Uh, Kim and Jody, is there anything else you'd like to share with our wonderful guest? Yeah, thank you. Love you. Thank you for coming. And then how can people find you? All my everything is Prince Board. P-R-I-N-T-Z-B-O-A-R-D. I do have my band, which is Parker Lane, my folk band that I sing. Mm -hmm. uh, let's call it Folk Soul Pop. Um, and then I have my funk band, which is called Funky Mama All Stars. And my um, that, that, that uh, TV show I spoke of is Flimsy. Flimsy. Um, you can get to all of that and everything through Prince Board. Wonderful. We're going to have links for all of that at the end of this video. We will also be sharing this on social. So again, anybody who's watching this, please feel free to go to Prince Board. Is it princeboard.com? Princeboard.com. Everything Prince Board. Perfect. Yeah. Prince, it has been an absolute pleasure. To pleasure. <laughs> oh, I headed to the last word. Oh. My, my heart I, I is it swelling. All. It's true. My heart is swelling. Yes. 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 That was amazing, Prince. Wow. Wow. <laughs>